Jen. You're listening to the Jewels and Coffee Hour, sharing the stories of Blizzard gamers around the world. Pull up a chair. We're glad you're here. Welcome to episode 21 of the Jewels and Coffee Hour. I'm Jules. I'm Coffee, and this is Avengers Endgame Week. Woo! <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm Are you excited? so pumped for that movie. Holy crap. So ready. I, so ready. I, 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 I'm, we'll talk about it a little bit more as we get into the show, because I think it's going to be the prime subject matter of this topic. But um, I am... I realized like last week that I hadn't bought tickets to go see it. And I was like, oh, I need to go do this. Yeah, and it you need to get took on me, that. Um, right? I know. Did, did, so do you have tickets to go see Endgame? Do you know oh, yeah. So my wife has even taken off work. And we're going on Friday. Um, early showing, like a matinee. And we go to this theater called IPIC where you... Uh, Cookie Kabusi right there, my wife. She said, <laughs> Friday, baby. <laughs> Hi, Emma. Um, yeah, so we're, we go to this theater called IPIC where you sit back in these beautiful lounge chairs and they give you blankets and they serve you drink and food. And blankets? Just, oh, yeah. It's it's a comfy, comfy time. It's how you're supposed to watch a movie. It really is. Oh, man. Okay, I have not yet experienced like the blanket thing. Um, but I think, okay, first let me introduce the show and then I have to loop right back to this because <laughs> I swear I need to ask you questions about this. Okay. So <laughs> the Jules and Coffee Hour, we're here to talk about you and the things that affect us as part of our Hero Talk community. We're talking about as, as Blizzard gamers, as the things that we love as nerds. And what better thing to talk about than one of the biggest nerd events in the upcoming weeks uh and like it's like simultaneously nerding out right now with game of thrones and uh, avengers endgame so coffee came up with this amazing topic idea of talking about how gaming and entertainment influences our culture um our wardrobe our 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 life our world so that's what we're talking about today that is our topic and i love it and i'm so glad we're here for it so okay let me loop back to this i have reservations about a blanket in a movie theater that asleep? someone else no no the icky stuff <laughs> like do they wash them oh lord i i mean yeah i think so it's like it seems like a very classy place the other thing about okay. it is this is a small theater like even though the screen is big there's there's only i think like nine little pods of two so that means there's 18 people watching at Wait, one, what? At one okay, time. Wait, what? Okay, that's like that's like super exclusive. But like it's you're going dark and yeah. You're basically going the Hollywood like insider version of No, nah, it's, well, it's not like that. It's like you're going to it's like you're going to a classy restaurant or right? a candlelight yeah, dinner, okay. but you're also going okay. to see Avengers, you know? I don't know. It's like I, I think have it's you a done chain. this experience before oh yeah we we see we go here all the time i what, what was the okay. last thing we saw there let me think emma's probably gonna yell at me in chat um <laughs> what's the last thing we saw there thinking thinking so you thinking. get food there too like they'll bring you food at your seat and you oh, can yeah. eat right there captain oh, marvel captain duh marvel. <laughs> yeah yeah and it was amazing holy crap that movie so good too uh, I'm so curious to see how Captain Marvel plays into this next, this conclusion too. I think she's going to be a big part of what we see on Friday. But um, yeah, they yeah. they serve you food, they bring you drink. We so if you get there, you should get there ahead of time, like at least thirty minutes ahead of time, so you can mm-hmm. put your order in, so you have your food and your drink and everything by the time the movie starts, and and then. If you just ever need the waiter again, you press a little button on your table. You have a table between you guys in the lounge chairs, and then he comes over and is like, what can I get you? And I'm like, give another round. Bring another round of drinks. Yeah. Right? And yeah, he just goes off and he does his thing, and you just you just get to watch an epic film uh, while you're nomming on some 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 yummy food. So it's it's a good time. It's, it's a good time. 
this sounds amazing and i am low-key jealous i so the the theater that's close to my house the closest to my house i have not been there in a while i think the last time i saw what i saw there was ready player one and oh, such a it good was movie. Oh. it was a great movie i loved it yeah the theater is old and it's one of the older kind of theaters that i mean they still have the chairs that like like lean back and stuff but it's not the recliner yeah. lounge chair kind of experience but apparently they may have updated things because i could i was able to reserve a seat and it did say they had reclining chairs so that sounds really awesome but here's my problem or the dilemma that i have in, in terms of how this whole thing kind of ties to our topic is that i am literally I am not the kind of person that gets super excited about going to the theater because of really bad experiences with other people acting like fools. Yeah. And, but I find that I, I am kind of like forced to go see end game or infinity war before it, or, you know, all of the other Avengers movies because I don't want to be spoiled on social media and I don't want to be, it, it's that it's the weighing between it. And so I will literally get out of my comfort zone and go to the theater. So I don't get spoiled. And there's this, di this the dilemma that I'm running into where I'm like, people are going to act like fools. They're going to be flipping their phone open during the middle of the movie. And they're going to be talking. There's going to be some dude talking to his girls. What'd she say? What'd she, how oh, did man. that, I don't understand. Oh. Or the guy that fell asleep during infinity war and snored. You're, you're tilting me. You're tilting me right now. Um, I know. So I would prefer to be in the comfort of my own home with my feet up I on my it. comfy couch I watching this amazing movie. I mean, this is sort of the best of both worlds, right? So there's, I think that you get that, that comfort because you're in a lounge chair and you feel snuggly because you have a blanket and you're, just, it's the, you're so it's just very like comfortable in this chair yeah and then there's less like no one's gonna act like a moron um because there's less anonymity because there's less people in this like if somebody's acting like a moron you know who it is right and you can get that guy kicked out if you just go talk to like staff or something like that so i yeah. like this i like this theater a lot i also think though that what you're describing and that kind of culture of like talking during the movie and like checking your phone and stuff, I've seen a lot less since I moved to Los Angeles. I feel like people really? here, yeah, people here respect films, um, even like, you know, kind of weird, silly films. They respect it. And I, I like that a lot. So they applaud at certain moments. You know, the audience will apply. I never, I never experienced that living back East. I've never seen a film where people would applaud in the middle of the mm -hmm. film or something like that. I thought, mm -hmm. what? Right in the middle of the film? What is this? Um, and they, the, the best thing about film in LA is most of the audience sits through the entire credit, like the, the entire credit scene to, to pay respect to all the, the humans that worked on this great film. And I love that. I think that's really cool. So yeah, and I just, a lot of times, most people probably know somebody sure, yeah, who's yeah. done something exactly. related to that movie. <laughs> Yeah, a, I mean it's it's in this, a roundabout sense in LA. That's the that's the world we live in here. Is just like everyone in some way, shape, or form relates back to um, all the the hardworking people, individuals that are doing work on the film. So you're paying respect to those people that are working on the film, and I think that helps yeah. the society here is um, just be more respectful when they're watching a film too. So yeah. I, I like it. It's cool. So, you know, we've we've both demonstrated one of the big things about this whole Avengers Endgame hype is that we are um, we are making specific plans around making sure that we see it very quickly and not miss out on the opportunity to be a part of that phenomenon. Yeah. And I think that, you know, both of us are Game of Thrones fans as well, and I think that it and I was just talking about this because most of my office of you know of six other people are Game of Thrones fans as well and we all remarked that this is the only show that we won't just wait to watch when it's convenient we're gonna watch it the moment it's available on HBO now same here I mean I feel the same way it's like we were I think we were like counting down the moments to watch it th this past weekend yeah. 
Um, I mean, I don't know another show on TV that I don't. Th- I don't know the show on TV we've ever done that with. Actually, that's kind of crazy. The last time that I remember doing this was when we didn't have on-demand television and there was no Netflix and there was no TiVo where we had to watch it when it aired or you didn't catch it. And or you, you get that VCR that... out and you hit that yeah. record button. <laughs> Bless VCRs. <laughs> right? I know. But we would all experience things like ER and Friends and Seinfeld by watching it mm-hmm. when it aired. And if you missed it, you missed it. Like, yeah. you'd, you know, you'd hope that maybe you could catch it in reruns during the summer when they did yeah. the season reruns again. But you, if you missed it, you missed it. Oh, yeah. And so the... I think about it from the from the how it's this this whole phenomenon of these two things kind of joining together uh, at the same time has influenced our culture. Um, I have I have had people ask me if I would make Game of Thrones themed things in chainmail. Chainmail, yeah, um, of course. Yeah, um, you know it's, and then you see the thing that I hate the most which is the people who are not fans of these things who are putting things on social media to uh, make fun of those that are and to, you know, to wear the badge of pride. I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. I don't care what Captain America is going to do. And um, yeah, like I just, I don't know, man. The, the, we live in a world right now when we're, we were all just kind of focused so much around the culture and the, and the things that are so exciting for us that it breeds two sides of the story. It's the people mm-hmm. who are mega fans and the people who are haters. I find it troubling that the, the majority of the haters, the ones that are so anti Marvel or so anti Game of Thrones are the people that have never even seen an episode or a movie and they're yeah. just saying they're doing that to be different because I know yeah. our, our culture and our society values individuality and like being mm-hmm. different is really good. Right. That's what mm-hmm. it seems like. But if you never tried something, I think that that's just ignorance, not, you know, uniqueness. You know what I mean? Like if you've never tried it or or, or given it a chance, I don't think that that makes you special, you know, uh, so those people, yeah. those people irk me. I, they tilt me a little bit. They do, and you know, so like last year, last year, the year before last, was it um, when Infinity War came out? I happened to be visiting my parents in New Jersey, oh. and I had forgotten that I had booked the the trip around when the the movie was coming out, and so I was like, oh crap! Like, how am I going to avoid spoilers? Well, my my but my dad was amazing, and he basically drove me to the theater like I was fourteen years old again. Aww. Dropped me off there, and then picked me up when it was over. And they just like were like, "Yeah, you can go on your day and do your thing, and then we'll we'll get up, we'll catch up later, and we'll go and have lunch and have dinner and whatever." And but they at the same time they were like, "Yeah, we have no interest in seeing that movie at all." And I was like, "But it's Infinity War. Are you kidding? It's the most incredible thing, like intense the, the, the yeah. like main event thing that comes for our 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 movie scene." And uh they just you know, they don't get Star Wars, they don't get that. Right. But they kind of they kind of rib me about it. They tease me about it why it's such an intensely important thing to me and it just so happens that i'll be out there in a couple of weeks to visit and game of thrones will still be airing at the time so i will have my trusty laptop so i can go up into my room at nine o'clock eastern standard time (laughs) eastern daylight time to watch game of thrones they're gonna be like oh there she goes again (laughs) yeah but so that is a, a a mega influence in our culture is arranging our super busy lives around this event yeah people have made plans for this i mean i mentioned it earlier in my stream and everyone had like a story of like when they were going to see it and who they were going to see it with and Mm -hmm. some people a lot of a lot of people in my stream are european and some they someone saw it yesterday someone's Mm -hmm. seeing it tonight um someone said they in china they saw it yesterday or something like that but Mm -hmm. there's so many people that they like they know if you go, when are you going to see it? They know the date. They know the time. They know who they're who they're going to see it with, where they're going to be. Saturday at 10 a.m. There you go. 
but yeah everyone makes plans around this and i think it's interesting i think this is a marvel this is actually like a marvel thing like i don't i don't remember um another franchise or movie um you know from my childhood Star Wars. Star well Wars. star wars star wars is different but but even star wars i would say you know sadly i wasn't i wasn't alive in uh uh 1977 so i was yeah. <laughs> i didn't uh i wasn't a part of that but um even like you know the prequels people weren't people were like okay cool we'll go see the star wars movies at some time but the like i would i would say the majority of people were just like we'll see it when it's convenient they weren't making plans around it somehow i saw a lot of fanaticism around the prequels especially the very really? first one because it was it had been so long since return of the jedi okay and so people there was a lot of hype i remember working in a place where i had a coworker who was just a mega fan of everything okay. and so it and maybe it was just the people that i was surrounded by but um you think that, i know you i think remember that it's the same though like the same kind of hype marvel and star wars it was to me that first one was it was beyond and then the movie came oh, wow. out and well, yeah. and then you know you know the results of that yeah. and so but there there wasn't the internet at the time so there wasn't the echo chamber that would people mm. would be able to just have like the same thing that they did to solo mm -hmm. um where people really just tore it down and made it sound feel like it was a horrible movie that was all spread by word of mouth and discussions God, between friends. I love Solo. But <laughs> I know I loved it too, but I didn't see it in the theater. I saw mm. it on an airplane because right. that was when I watched it. And so, yeah, I I, I remember the, the, the massive, massive hype around episode one. And then it died significantly for two and three. But people were still excited about it. I mean, I even liked, I mean... I'm going to get hate for this, but I liked episode one and it was like where they were taking, I just wanted more star Wars stories, right? I was yeah. going to take anything I could get. And I accepted episode one. I was like, Oh, this is great. There's double bladed lightsabers and there's racing. And uh, you know, it was new things in the star Wars world, but people made me feel silly for getting so excited about episode one. And when I tell yeah. people that we're going to see Avengers, um, people are, don't make me feel silly they're like oh yeah i'm gonna go see it you know too i feel like i feel like avengers or the marvel universe has expanded like it's cool to like marvel films now mm -hmm. and when i was growing up it was not cool to like star wars you were yeah. a nerd i don't know it's like nerd culture has something has changed and i i feel like it it happened at some point in this marvel decade it changed. Yeah. So. so now I remember as a, as because I was young and I was uh, I'm old enough to remember the the era of episodes four, five, and six um, when they were coming out. Um, you know, seventy seven. I was three, so um, that was a little young. But like my my childhood friends, a lot of them were like my parents' friends. Uh, mm -hmm. who had kids and you know to hang out with those kids and so the boys would have all the action finger figures from uh empire strikes back and return of the jedi and i remember going to see return of the jedi in the theater and that was a big deal that was super exciting and, and super fun but the uh the hype was more like it, the cool part was like you were young and you could play with these action figures and that was okay but as soon as you got older liking star mm -hmm. wars was not cool yeah. and and like I went to Vegas a couple weeks ago and I couldn't tell you how many people, regular looking people that I saw out there wearing Star Wars shirts and, you know, Captain America shields. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's every day. It's everyday life. It's everyday apparel. And it comes in. It comes in every form of everything like, yeah. you know, women's women's outfits, purses, all of those things as well. And I just. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy with that. I'm so Me too. happy to see that. Yeah. And it's not just Wonder Woman stuff. It's like oh. Iron Man and and I and, and Captain Marvel, of course, but it's uh Captain America and it's um 
you know, I mean, I've seen all, even if you want to go into the DC universe, I've seen the, the Superman stuff and the Batman stuff and the Aquaman stuff. Like people are wearing that. We were out on Sunday. Uh, we had family in town this past week uh, or weekend. And um, we were out walking around on Sunday and there were so many Game of Thrones shirts. Like it was nuts. It. it was nuts. There's so much uh -huh. Game of Thrones stuff. Like yep. there, some things know. were like super in your face like this is a freaking house emblem and then other things mm -hmm. were like very you know small kinds of things like um like like there was a targaryen um like the three-headed dragon or something like a very small like on a pocket i saw yeah or something like that like yeah. I, I don't know like some things were like super and and only someone who knows Game of Thrones would know what the hell that is. Someone mm -hmm. someone who didn't would think that's like a monster from Godzilla or something like that, right? I don't know. Yep. But yeah, yeah things I mean, like I, that. It's crazy. I've seen that too. And like the variations of I drink and I know things, uh, but oh, yeah. said in different phrases or different things. Um, you on know, a cup, blank on a I, mug. Yeah, a or a shirt. <laughs> um, and yeah, things. and it's so that part to me makes me so happy that we're allowed and able to have those things and but i think about like my own personal wardrobe and it's hilarious to me that like 95 percent of my clothing shirts are black t-shirts with some kind of geeky thing related to it yeah for me That's specifically my entire wardrobe and this is what what made me think of this for as a topic was i my entire wardrobe is video gaming shirts yes. like <laughs> It's either there's like some sort of Twitch logo on it or there's a Heroes Hearth logo on it or I've got like some World of Warcraft shirts or I have a Borderlands shirt. Like it's all – every T-shirt I have is a graphic T-shirt with like something related to video games or like Heroes of the Storm. I have a million Heroes of the Storm shirts. But like that's my yeah, entire wardrobe I, now. It's the same thing for me and I'm lucky enough that I can work in a place where I can show up in, you know, Overwatch gear or – uh twitch gear or here's yeah. hearth gear and nobody cares um but yeah it's funny when you think about that like i was listening the other day to a podcast and i'm like oh man they're talking about pitfall on atari 2600 and i love that game and i want to get a t-shirt of of pitfall and like th those are the things that i i would like want to spend my money on which is why of course i get bombarded by like think geek and all those other oh, yeah. stores of like oh, spam your got this email going on. <laughs> oh i know like how much money can you spend on all this stuff? Whatever. Right. But yeah, it's just, there's, I think that what has happened in this culture now is that like, you cannot deny it, that it's, a, it, it is such a strong and a significant part of our culture, but, and, and the, 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 the thing you were talking about earlier, like it wasn't cool earlier and now it's okay. It's accepted. It's not, it's not frowned upon. Yeah. My wonder though, is if it's going to stay that way. Yeah. I I wondered the same thing. Like I wonder what the next because this is a especially regarded like Marvel and and uh well the Marvel universe and the Game of Thrones are moving on, right? They're concluding. Yeah. Um I wonder if those specifically those things will kind of drift back away into like you know the shadows of society and culture and if if there will be another kind of you know large fandom thing that becomes mainstream or will mm -hmm. will those types of um will those be like things we don't see as much of and when we do see them will they be kind of obscure and will people be like what are you wearing and things like that you know yeah. i wonder the same thing yeah yeah, and that's I mean when you think about these two intersecting uh fandoms that are that are happening right now at the same time like and they're ending right yeah. now around the same time And Star Wars is too. We... This Christmas. Yes. You have yeah. the the end of the Skywalker trilogy. So Exactly. And so now will we have those moments of people being so hyped up, excited, making plans to see it um making special arrangements to to make sure that it's being seen right away and watched at the same time or around the same time so you're not spoiled or you're part of the phenomenon and yeah. uh, that i hope so because it's damn fun like i 
I love being a part of that. And, you know, the same thing that happens with BlizzCon, like when we all see something new at the same time and we've all been there, yeah. you just went through that with Star Wars Celebration to experience like a new trailer of a sh of the, the last movie of this trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just because we're talking about Star Wars, uh, I remember, God, how long ago is it now? Has it been seven years or so ago at this point? Um, mm -hmm. so, something around something around that. That's when Disney bought um, Lucasfilm and yeah. Star Wars. Seven, seven, eight, seven. I want to say something like that. That sounds about right. Seven. Um, and somebody asked me, God, Chris, I I know you're I know you're a huge Star Wars fan. What do you What do you think about this? What how do you feel about Disney buying Star Wars? I mean, isn't that terrible? And I was like, no, it means we're going to get more Star Wars movies. It means a whole new generation of kids are going to be exposed to Star Wars. And that, that makes me so happy. So I, I love that um, things like Star Wars are like a cool thing in our culture. Yeah. That makes me so happy. And then, you know, but then on the other side, it's like, I grew up being a Star Wars fan when it wasn't cool, right? <laughs> it's, yes. it's kind of interesting to like go see a Star Wars movie now with a bunch of people that are just are there because they realized it was cool in just like the last year or so. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. a different experience than going to see a Star Wars movie. Like because my parents took me to see I was probably a teenager. They took me to see they re-released all the um, original films in theaters mm -hmm. and they took me to see I those. And that. that was going to see those films was a different experience than going to see these new films. Like these new films, you've got people from all walks of life, you know, you've got kids in there and things like that. And that was not the way it was when you would see a star Wars movie in the nineties. Yeah. It was totally different. No, so. That was the when you when you saw them in the theaters with the re release. That was when Lucas did all those changes too, oh, where he yeah. added stuff. Oh yeah. And I remember that because I remember going to see those. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just I mean, these are memories that we have and that we're going to hold on to. And I hope that there's more of that. I hope that um, we continue to see these things in you know ingrained in our culture and becoming a part of our lives. And you don't know what's coming. Like you don't no. you don't know what we're gonna get next. But I'm, I'm really, I'm just happy that we have this right now. I'm just sad that it's going to end. <laughs> like every time we see the new episode uh, of Game of Thrones, I'm like, oh, we're just that much closer to this not being here anymore. We have four episodes left of it now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was sad. I was so sad um, on Sunday when the episode ended, not because of, like it was necessarily a sad episode, but just because I wanted more. I did not want to yeah. wait an entire week to see more i was just so sad i really was i just wanted more of what was happening not to spoil oh. anything i'm not going to spoil anything no. i just want more of that that feel and that oh, kind of like man. everything came together before the big the big <sighs> battle and it's such fan service i know but it was like we've been all the relationships yeah mm -hmm. all the relationships and characters that we've been building for eight seasons all of our favorites anyway and in one place and it was just it's my favorite episode of game of thrones it, really it is. is i i loved it and so when i got uh hbo now again for watching it this for East season eight i decided to start watching from season one uh again so and it's i'm so glad i did because this episode had a lot of throwbacks to some of the earlier stuff and mm. so it was it was awesome to have just seen it and go oh man i remember the nuances related to that conversation right yeah but I remember thinking about this as I've been watching this show for over eight years because it's been going on for that long, is that we've, these amazing characters, many of their paths have never intersected yep. and until now. And it's just, oh, so, so good. And I watched, I watched so much of it and I keep watching more of it. Uh, here's a little funny story though. I think I'm in season three right now, um, right at the end of season three and HBO now has sent me an email saying, here's an introduction to all the new characters that you've seen in season three. And I was like, it was like an automated email to trigger 
someone who's watching this season okay. and i'm like i, I this this is kind of, i know who these people are i know these <laughs> i'm very familiar with these individuals it's like i know what's gonna happen in the last uh in the last episode of the season i know Ooh, what's is, gonna happen is season but three red wedding yeah it's what it's Ooh. red wedding Oof. yeah yeah it yeah. is <laughs> i just ended before that one last oh, night and man. i'm like all right we're watching red wedding tonight before bed yes Oof. we are um yeah Yikes. so good anyway but the the nice part of having the ability that we have now is that i can go back and i can watch all of it again yeah. and it's just like star I, I i will argue i will argue that in in our modern era of the last you know 40 years star wars really defined what it was like to have a mega fandom for a uh a series a a uh, property to the point where people were it was ingrained in their culture in their in their uh apparel bedding decor yeah. people getting married with themed weddings around it uh name your you know pick your poison it was it's around it yeah i mean star wars fans are some of the best fans on the planet and yeah there's there's um memorabilia and like swag i guess from in, in like every shape and form you know whether it could be something you're eating on or it's like you, whether it's the toys or um something you're wearing or something functional right it's just there's so there's it's in, it's in everything the merchandise alone yeah. is a billion dollar um you know enterprise it's crazy crazy so you're you're in your gaming slash uh stream room right now you yeah. have things in your room that are that are decorated based on your fandoms right you're looking around right now i can see you uh point out some of the things in your room that you have going on right there i mean right here my eye is just drawn right above me it's drawn to an <laughs> autographed picture of chewbacca Oh, you're gonna can you pull it down? You're pulling yeah. it down. Oh, that's awesome. It's right here. Peter oh, Mayhew. Oh, Peter Mayhew. Yeah. Oh, dude. My boy Pete. He's no longer playing Chewie. He's passed the torch, but he's yep. inspired a whole new generation of Wookiees. Yep. Like the legend yep. he is. That is um, amazing. What else is in there? This is pretty cool. So um these are these are little decorative things. They're embroidered, embroidered hoops. Yeah, and my sister-in-law made these for me because these are actually um, made from old T-shirts that I just oh, wore wow. to death. So this is a good example because they were T-shirts, and now they're a form. They're a form of art hanging in my stream room. Little it's a dibbles. cute but deadly Kerrigan and a cute but deadly Diablo inside of an embroidery hoop and stretched inside that as something that you can display on the wall. That's exactly. super cool. What a neat idea. Yeah. So what was, you know, clothing at one point is now a work of art and, you know, very obviously in the Blizzard universe, right? So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Uh, what else? Um, I have... Uh... I have a scarf here. With an alliance scarf. An alliance scarf. I love it. Dirty alliance. But I have it. Um, if you're listening uh, to this show, uh, one of the things I would love to have you guys do is I'd love to have you take a picture of, the, the, of your gaming slash fandom room and, and tweet them at us. Yeah, and show us. Show us your fandom. Show us the the things that in that you surround yourself by in your house. I'm looking around my desk right at this moment. I have uh, an Alliance um, uh, coaster, a rubber coaster that I got in one of the BlizzCon um, boxes, the, the the goodie boxes. On my wall next to me, I have a um, a, a perler bead sombra that's on the wall, like made out of perler beads. A, a, an autographed. A uh, picture of the voice artist behind Gem, Gem and the uh, holograms, because I was a huge Gem fan. 
Um, as well as my signed Tom Cook uh, She-Ra colored print <laughs> that he made. He's the guy who drew She-Ra. Um, a picture of Loki. A picture of, uh, who else? Oh, another one from Sombra. BlizzCon 2016 and Heroes of the Storm. And it's like, these things are all over my walls. They're, yep. they're, these are all like, this is my room. This is my stream room. This is my gaming room. And it's it's my fandom. And what's your shirt that you're wearing? Heroes of the Storm, baby. There you go. And I need to replace this because the cat has stepped on it and put a hole right underneath where my hair is. Oh, my goodness. So I need a new one. Do you replace it or yeah. do you just make it into a like embroidered, stretchy piece of art? Maybe it's very faded and cracked the the logo yeah. suit because I mean I've had this one for probably it's collector's three item. years. It's collector's item. Yeah, so I probably I just need a new one yeah. or more than one. So. <laughs> so there you go. You did you wear that to yeah. work today? No, oh, um, okay. I had I had work gear on today. Um, I my work has uh has a like logoed apparel that we can wear that they bought for me, so I wore that today. Gotcha. But. Um, so this is special for the stream. I wore this one for the stream because gotcha. I could have been just wearing my black T-shirt that I wore yeah. under my windbreaker. And I'm like, no, no, no. We're talking about things that influence our culture. I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts. I just shirts, have like a Twitch wearing... shirt. It's just like Twitch a Twitch shirt, logo. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, but, I don't know. It's it's part of, it's like our fashion. It's our style. It's like, yeah. It, it's us. It's become part of us. And we take that with us wherever we go now. And yeah. I feel like that's not unique. That's the new norm i see i see everyone doing that so it's just really it's fascinating it's super cool something it really that really is I, did, I never thought i'd see but it it's it is it is it is us it is yes. us now so i think we have i think we've kind of run through all of the topics that i wanted to discuss for this one it, did you have anything else that you wanted to do before we move into telling a little bit of story stuff um, I, I have like a transition thing. What we were do it. I yeah. like transition things. Look at you. So I said my um, my family was visiting this past weekend, and it's it's Emma's family actually. Emma's aunt and uncle and their two sons uh, were visiting us, and um, first of all, their two sons like last time I saw them, they were like so tiny, and now they're all grown mm -hmm. up, and it's crazy, but the um their younger son i don't know if he's if he's just if he's in high school now or middle school is like early high school or something but he's um he loves video games he wants to be a streamer and we chatted about that he had like some gaming t-shirts and i just like i was like god that is so cool i i wish that i had video game shirts uh when i was growing up <laughs> and i, yes. I didn't have that you know <laughs> That's just not something I had, but it's so cool to see. Not only like does he like video games, but he's like he's thinking about becoming a streamer and having that be his oh, wow. like profession. You know, it's just so wild and that's mm -hmm. blows my mind because that was just never something that entered my mind. If somebody would have told me when I was his age that you could make money playing video games, it would have blown my damn mind. I, I, I wouldn't have known what to do with myself. I, I, who knows? Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. And it, what it, I, 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 this actually brings up an interesting topic, which we can kind of, you know, kind of just jump off of. But I wonder, so, I mean, I've, I've thought about this at length and I've actually had a conversation with my dad about it and said, you know, so let's say you start young we we're going to like i'm going to play video games uh and and stream and i'm going to make a living on that and you become you know quite successful at it and make a good living at it and i think that's amazing but i worry and have concerns about like what is it going to be for those people down the road when it comes to like what do they want to do after that like because I know like when I started working after college, it was working in, you know, some kind of an office job and you learned all these different skills about all these different things that could translate to pretty much, you know, any other yeah, job that anything. you would go to. Right. Right. Like you could, you know, it, it was the basics of, you know, meetings and people and all that kind of stuff. Just and email. 
right? Email, yeah. Just learning like, how to send and receive email, I feel like, or email etiquette is something. Yeah. Yeah. Or being a supervisor for something, you know, or, or leading a team or having projects that you have to work on related to your job. And not to say that that is not, that, that being a streamer is not a sustainable thing, but like, what happens when you burn out, if you burn out? What happens if, you know, because I've worked at jobs where I have literally just burnt out of it and mm -hmm. just been like, I can't do this anymore. This is not something that I want to do long term. Yep. Or the company is not, you know, I, I, I worry about streamers who are playing games that they love and love and love. And then the game changes and it's no longer the game that it was when they started and we're super passionate about it. Like what happens next? Yeah. I I question the same things. I mean, um, because you're a professional, you've worked in the professional world for many years. Um, you have a high level of training and knowledge in what you do with programming, and that is a translatable skill that could run into anything else. You could you right. could go to pretty much any company. I have the same skill sets of, you know, not your skill sets, but I can, if I'm an office manager, so I could literally office manage any kind of company anywhere. Uh, it doesn't matter the, the subject matter. It's just more about what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, so, I, I have the same concerns. I, I feel like, but it, it kind of translates into just about every other profession that people pursue at a young age and, my parents like god what did i my, what did, the first thing i wanted to be was an nba basketball player right <laughs> the second second thing i wanted to do was um be a doctor and then finally i settled on i'm going to be an actor and throughout all these changes my parents were like just make sure you got a plan b you know i mm -hmm. can't even count how many times they said that just make sure you got a yes. plan b and they were right. They were smart. And I tried my best to like learn other skills, you know, while I was pursuing mm -hmm. my main type of thing. But I feel like that, that advice translates to streaming too. It's work on your mm -hmm. streaming, um, do what you're passionate about, create your content, just make sure you're working on other skills and working on a plan B or a backup plan or a plan A dot B. Or something a like dot that. B. I don't know. You know what I mean? A point two. Sure. A point two. Right. The and I I mean just talking about streamers in general, like a lot of times you need to understand, uh, you know, so you have to have in depth knowledge of social media and algorithms and the posting mechanisms yeah. that happen for YouTube Holy and crap. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, Snapchat, all of those things. So starting that a stream a is starting skill. a business. You know what I it mean? Is. It's it, there's so many skills involved. I I don't th I don't know that um, many companies would see the transferable mm -hmm. skill sets, right? But if you're talking about just for the individual themselves learning other skills, holy crap, starting a stream is ridiculous amount of work. It's, it's, it's definitely starting a business. Yeah, um, and you, you, and you'll figure that out, it. especially come tax season. You'll realize that <laughs> <Yes>. that's true, <laughs> but yes, I mean, because you're, you're dealing, you're doing promotion, marketing, um, social media. Most of the time, if you're, if you're good, you're also making your own graphics. And so, or learning how to make your own graphics, video mm -hmm. editing, um, all those things. And so, yeah, I find, I think that it's awesome and it's going to be, you know, a really, really interesting time in the next 10 years to see what this influx of live streaming as a dedicated um, profession is going to turn into for people who maybe want to move on to something else or change over. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that become? How does that look? Um, and I look at it from a perspective of someone who did all of the, you know, office professional life for 20 years before coming into this world. And so it's, I, I have the ass backwards way of it. Like, you know, <laughs> it is ass backwards because I literally come into it later after having all those skills and then having to adapt to what this is on this front. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
it's just interesting. It, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something I have thought about in the past. No, I'm glad is, you brought is... it up. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's a, I mean, especially because games change. They're constantly updated now, and something you were mm-hmm. passionate about at one point, um, you may not be passionate about it next patch, and then suddenly you built your entire life around something. I mean, we've yeah. we're going we're going through that now in the heroes community, and we're seeing yeah. where people land and that sort of thing so it's definitely something that's on the forefront of my mind i just um i just i just hope that because at the end of the day all these streamers are so creative i mean they're just some of the most talented people i've ever met so mm-hmm. watching what they do next is going to be so fun to see honestly it's going to be so so fun it is. And personally, I, I, I like the fact that, that we do this kind of content, which is more evergreen. Like it's more globally yeah. focused around the gaming culture and in general. So like, you know, yes, we're very Blizzard focused, but we're also, we have our, our foot in the, you know, in all of the, the world of gaming, entertainment, pop culture, all of yeah. that kind of thing. And so it doesn't change like, we're going to continue to have content related to the stuff that we love. Oh, yeah. um, and there's like, there's a, a, a budding possibility of another opportunity for me, which is another kind of more of that evergreen, not gaming thing. Ooh. And I'm like, so it's such a different world to think about because it is, it is in my wheelhouse, but it's in a different format than mm-hmm. related to nerdy, you know gaming world okay. so it's interesting to see how that it's going to turn out but i know secrets secrets and stuff um okay so i i, I think we're going to wrap things up but i want to i want to tell i want to tell a, a story tell a story i already told my sort of family story with sam and his streamer uh passions and his t-shirts so you yeah. go for it your turn yeah okay all right so uh, it is no secret. It is no secret. I've not made it a secret that I am a single person. I, I have no significant other. I am not married. I am single. And so, uh, in the past, I've been, I've been single for about three years now. And in the past I have thought about or have attempted to look at dating apps in the past. And for some, I got a wild hair this weekend or, you know, and, and I, reinstated one of my dating profiles <laughs> oh boy this weekend and i had an experience this okay so let me just let me just like loop around the story to say in 24 hours my profile was disabled again oh, <laughs> because, because it was that kind of oh my god experience um and uh, so this you know it's difficult story than the one i told no it's not yes um, it is <laughs> no it's not no it's not so i have some photos you know you guys have you guys follow me on social media like you see me posting selfies and whatever and i have a couple photos on my profile of me uh like in a twitch shirt or a twitch hoodie or you know uh, i think i'm wearing one of my hero's hearth uh jersey at in one of them and um <laughs> this guy opens his conversation with me by saying what's your twitch handle and my immediate reaction was that's not fair you can stalk me if i give you my twitch handle and look at all my vods and see me in action and if you have twitch and don't stream that's not fair because i can't see what you are really like like you could ask him for his twitch handle but then you wouldn't be able to see like anything right like if he didn't do anything on twitch or just be blank yeah yeah no so i i i was like I, you know i said oh so you can stock my vods is my response <laughs> and he was like not nah, well maybe and i said well you give me yours i'll give you mine you know kind of like Ooh. a little smiley face like hi hi are you flirting right now with like a winky face <laughs> a winky face <laughs> and so um he made some kind of sly response well i think you're pretty cute so i'd like to know more about you and i was like okay so here's my i'm I just, fine i'm jules rpg on all socials and he gave me his and i won't i won't i won't say what it is but um i found out that this this person was a comedian locally in the area and 
had a bunch of YouTube videos and Instagram and that kind of thing. And I what? looked at it. I know. This story is amazing. <laughs> right? Oh and God. so I, I looked at it and I was like, and, and it, within five minutes of looking at the content, I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> because, okay, men, I'm just going to put this out here. Please, 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 please. When you make a dating profile, please use an updated picture. Please use an updated picture because if we start to, you know, do a little bit of research and find out that you are 70 pounds heavier than your profile picture, it's pretty obvious <laughs> and it's not cool. And I was just like, oh my God. And then I found a YouTube video of the guy and he was like, his, his buddy was interviewing him and I'm like, Hey, he's like, yeah, dude, you remember the time when you got drunk and you blacked out and you did this and this and this, and I'm going, no, <laughs> I don't want to date that. I don't. And, and then it was, yeah. So it was a very, like within 24 hours, I'm like. F this. I turned off the profile and I'm like, I am not. No, this no, circles back around to so much of what we've talked about in our episodes, like just about social mm -hmm. media and like technology in today's society and stuff and all that stuff he's done is permanently on the Internet. Right. Yes. So it's there for potential employer, potential partner. Right to be yeah i mean look i'm sure he's a very talented person i'm sure that he is you know i mean he, he was he had a lot of stuff out there but not compatible like no, no. and so it was just it's not no compatibility i'm sorry and oh so i but it i find it actually appreciate i'm appreciative of the fact that that information is out there now that i would be able to find it because mm -hmm. when I was like way, way, way back in the day, the like, you know, probably 2005 when I first, like when I was ever doing the whole online you'd dating thing. You'd have to thing, go on like can... several dates to figure this, a lot of this stuff out, right? Yeah. Or you'd have to go to like the regular, like the, the city or the state circuit court website to see if they had any convictions on shit. Oh, <laughs> Which I found out that one time from one guy that he had like duis and shit and i was like okay well i'm not going out with him but nowadays if you find out what their social media is you can find out and i've had years past i've had people who found out my social media and then ghosted me probably because they didn't like what they saw in the you know it's like well that's fine you know if you don't if you don't like that yeah. but They're i am so easy to yeah but i'm so freaking easy to stalk uh, in terms of like you know like not yeah. like stock stock but like you know you could creep all my vods you can creep my podcast you can get you can get a sense of my face live doing a show like right now <laughs> and, you, and you can I, i'm right here, here you are. and so hi content creator trying to date is a little bit harder and so i was like mm. I, I pretty much did the turn tail and run yipe, 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 thing and ran <laughs> There was like an alarm. It was like a brr, 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 and then you just like yeah. ran out the door. Or you jumped out the window, probably. I yeah, and I was like, nope, 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 nope. So I I don't I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should maybe try a different platform or I don't know. It's just so I don't know. I don't even I don't even know what to do anymore. The other son, <laughs> the other young man that was visiting. This was the, I was talking about the younger one. I wanted to be a streamer. The yeah. other one was on Twitter, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> Tinder. Tinder? He was on oh, Tinder no! the whole time he was here. I think, I want to say he just, he's not, you know, he's not too young. He just turned 21. He just turned 21. Yeah. So that's, he's just on Tinder, Tinder just swiping that bad boy, just, you know? This was not Tinder, by the way, but it, it, no, no, um, no, I, it I was, know. it was OkCupid, and OkCupid is apparently... Um, adopted the Twitter or not the Twitter. Did the same thing as you did the the Tinder, Tinder model Twitter, of swiping. Okay. They've adopted that. So, um, but apparently, like, it's just so weird. Like, you can message somebody, and if they match you, then you can see it. And sometimes you can see the message they write. It's it's just it's so weird. Wow. And oh, and so many so many married men looking for a hookup, and oh, and oh. And this is what dating is like what when they, you're in your 40s. What, do they, what do they do with that? What do they write? 
They I... usually po post a picture of themselves from the neck down, no pin, no face, and they'll say, "I am in a, I'm in a sexless, sexless marriage, looking for someone to." Ho yeah, look at your face. <laughs> He's sitting there with his mouth hanging open, like dead ass I mouth am hanging not open right okay now. Okay with that? I am not okay with that. Should I enable that. this again so I could start sending you some of these because they're damn funny? Like. <sighs> In the past, when I have date or tried to date on on God. on these apps, I've actually done screenshots of the shit that I've received, and it's so funny. It's really really funny. I am not okay with the like neck down shot. That makes me just think of like. First of all, that's gross. Second of all, it makes me think of like, um, a freaking like, um, unsolved mysteries episode where they've got <laughs> the like, the like dude that doesn't want to be you know like they've got the anonymous like witness that comes on and it just creeps me out man the guy who is blacked out. out and then his voice yeah. is all messed up yes that's who you're gonna go on a date with is that guy yeah. are you kidding me yeah. jesus yeah. oh man i mean people have been highly highly entertained by some of the previous things that i have gotten <sighs> Um, Boy. and it, so there's, there's a part of me that gets very amused by all of it. And there's a part of me that just goes, I like, ew, ew. So I don't know, maybe I should just try a different platform and, and do some all right. posting. I think I say you re-enable it and we create a new segment on the jewels and coffee hour. It's like a <laughs> five or 10 minute segment where we just look at the, 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 um, the you know the, the okay cupid of the they week post on yeah. you. <laughs> the okay cupid of the week and we just like we read the messages out loud we do we do the whole thing i have so many from like my last year or so of, like the year ago that i did this and, like it's hilarious and so i think okay. i could probably i think we I gotta do this some good content. I, think, I think we gotta do this for let's, science let's do this for science and okay. we'll we'll do it you have like message chains like back and forth um, kind of? Most of the time, it's just it's like people who want me to match with them, and I. Okay. I, rarely is it message change that that well. It, it has been like I have one that I could show you from a couple years ago that was freaking spooky. I was gonna um, say in the case of like a message chain, like I pl I'll, will like roll. I'll be the guy. <laughs> you play the girl. Or then, oh like, maybe God. if you just have, like, some screenshots of some profiles, we, like, go through and, like, dramatically read their profile or something like that. <laughs> A dramatic reenactment of I the OK know. Cupid could be conversation. Really good. <laughs> I think this is at least you guys a 10-minute segment. <laughs> I think we're on to something I'm, here. I'm down with whatever, dude. I, okay. I am more than willing to make content related to this. If you guys want, like, a separate bonus episode of this stuff, we could think about doing it. Uh, yeah, this I could mean, be hilarious. there <laughs> is re there's some very funny stuff that yeah. happens, and then there's some really gross stuff. But okay, um, well, all right, all right, I'll re-enable, and we'll 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 or, or, or I will try a different platform possibly, and then okay. we'll see what we get. So, all right, I'll look into it this week <laughs> for science. For, si for science, it's for science, it's it's. Fair. <laughs> now we're not going to be bringing this up next show, and there is a good reason why. Um, but it's very good. It's a very good and very positive reason, but we'll institute this in two weeks because we have a very special episode coming up next week. Um, I'm very stoked about this. So we had, um, a letter that came to us from Munster's army and he asked us about talking about PTSD. Um, and when he brought that up, I immediately thought of a very good friend of mine who has been on my shows prior years past. Uh, his name is Jim Beverly, and he is a retired Army Sergeant, a U.S. Army. And about six years ago, I met him through someone. Uh, actually, no, we met him as a fan of the show. He was a fan of the Torn Think Tank podcast. And he uh, messaged us and told us his story, and he said, I would love to tell my story on the show. And he was deployed in Iraq and um, was uh, was bombed on his patrol. And when you talk about an intense moment of uh, recovery and learning how to incorporate into normal life again, his story, he was actually written in Time Magazine sometime in around 2003. So his article is out there. I can pull that up for the show. Um, 
and it tells the exact the, the, the entire story of what happened. Uh, he is extremely eloquent and funny and poignant. He'll make you cry. He will make me coffee. Be prepared. Bring your tissues because every time yeah. I have him on a show, I cry. I got him so, here. So always have yeah. him for this show. So we're gonna bring him in. First time ever for Jules and Coffee Hour is to have a guest on the show. The and... first guest on the show. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be very. And it cool. won't be the last. We're, no, we're thinking about no, more. No, it won't be the last. That. So that's what we're going to have next week. So it'll be a little bit more of an intense episode, a more uh, in-depth episode, but I think it's going to be very important. Um, and if you are someone who has suffered from PTSD, who has uh, who's worked with it for, with therapy and other methods and would like to contribute to the conversation before we have the episode, please do send us up an email at podcast at heroeshearth.com. Yeah. Cool. Coffee. Anything else before we say adios? to this episode yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little self-plug because do i it. i don't think it'll be appropriate next week um so next wednesday which is may 1st mm -hmm. there is an event happening in los angeles um uh which is being put on by 2k and gearbox and they're going to be revealing borderlands 3 for the first time the gameplay um live on their twitch channel on the borderlands 3 twitch but there's streamers that they've invited to this event to also stream the game live from the event. I'm going to be doing that the afternoon of May 1st um, over on the Coffee Club TV channel. So if you guys wouldn't mind, please stop by uh, twitch.tv slash coffee club underscore TV next Wednesday, yes. May 1st. Come hang out with me. Check out Borderlands 3 for the first time ever. It's going to be so, so, so fun. I would really appreciate seeing you guys there. Do you know what time you'll be streaming? Don't know. For it? Don't know the time yet. They're very secretive about the times. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually checked in with them this morning, and they were like, "No, we intentionally have not released the times. Uh, sometime in the next couple of days, I'll know a time." But it's just the. It's going to be the afternoon of May first. That's all I know okay. so far. I hope I'm home by that time, or I'm hope that it's happening while I'm home because I get done at five o'clock central. So hopefully you're still streaming at three o'clock Pacific. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long I'll get with the game. I'm assuming like probably yep. only an hour or so because you know there's going to be other streamers that want to get their hands on the game. But I'm just yeah. I'm so pumped, so excited. It's going to be great. Congratulations on such an awesome opportunity. <sighs> this is huge for you. It's going to be so fun. Thank you. You're welcome. You deserve it all, my friend. All of it. <laughs> Oh, I love you, Jules. You're the best. <laughs> I love you too. I do too. I mean, seriously, this is this is a huge thing. And please make sure you mark your calendars for next Wednesday, May first, so that you can give coffee all of your love. And I will be there if I can be after my job ends. So excellent. I think that's gonna do it for this episode of the Jules in Coffee Hour. We hope you've enjoyed your time by the fire with us today. I had so much fun today. I had no idea where we were going to go. And it's always a blast to see where we end up at the end of the day. So true. We we find our way. We don't know what that way is necessarily, but we find <laughs> our way. And that was a good, that was a great conversation. Um, and if I wasn't already like super pumped and excited for Infinity War or, or Endgame, I'm sorry. Um, now I'm like just beyond like ready to see that movie. I'm so ready to see that movie this friday it's you got three more soon. days i can't three make more it days. i'm not gonna make it <laughs> you'll just have to stream for the entire time until yeah. you get to there so you stay distracted sure that's how it's gonna work exactly all right my friends enjoy your time with everything we're gonna play that music uh enjoy game of thrones and enjoy uh end game we're gonna play that music to say goodbye as we always do it sounds like this Want to contact the show? You can email us at podcast at heroeshearth.com. And if you want to connect with us on Twitter, you can find me at coffee club underscore TV. You can find Jules at Jules RPG. You can also use those handles to follow our personal streams on Twitch as well and get notified when we go live. You can join us for the live broadcast at twitch.tv slash heroeshearth on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. 6.30 p.m. I even wrote it in there and I can't read it. 6.30 p.m. Central, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, or find us in podcast form on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, and Direct Feed. If you like this show and would like to support the great entertainment brought to you by Heroes Hearth, please, 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 please consider supporting them on Patreon at patreon.com slash heroeshearth. 
Thank you all for joining us today. And until next time, we're glad you're here. All done. There we go. Uh, Wazemo, if you're watching, thank you, dude. I'm getting some DMs from Wazemo saying nice things. <laughs> He's looking at my things. Aww. Aww. Appreciate that, Wazemo. That's awesome. Yay! Yeah. That, was a, that was a lot of fun. I, I literally had zero clue what I was going to talk about for this show, and I'm like, we're just going to wing this shiz. Damn, there was one thing I wanted to talk about I didn't get to talk about. I'm just remembering it now, but yeah. La last night they had the world premiere of Endgame in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, they mm -hmm. closed down like so. They they closed down the entire street, whole block or whatever, or blocks. And um, there's pictures of uh, Brie Larson walking the red carpet with these rings, mm -hmm. um, like like the Infinity Stones are on her yes. rings. And I'm like, holy shit. That is so fly. But like talk about nerd culture, like influencing fashion. Like, oh, that was so cool. Right? God, Scarlett so Johansson cool. did the same thing. She had she also had a version of it. Oh no. Uh, way. Of the Infinity Stones with a bracelet. I have so actually cool. thought about making something chain like, that, like that as in chainmail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd man. be pretty complex, but I sh I'm sure I could figure it out. Yeah. Um, but like think geek sells something like it too. Mm. Like if you can buy it on a cheaper end, but I don't so know, cool. man, it's like, I, it's probably, like, these are the things that are tough for me because I'm like, I want to create stuff that are people like people are super stoked about, Yeah. but you have to find the time when they're willing to buy it and you don't know how long it's going right. to sustain itself. So true. Um, like Harry Potter stuff, anything Harry Potter will sell. Like right no problem. Yeah. Uh, if I did anything Star Wars, it would sell. Um, right. It's just a matter of like, you have to understand and know, like we didn't even talk about Harry Potter, but man, that's like another fandom that is just ingrained and, and yep. I, evergreen. So true. So true. It's another one. It was so funny today. I was, um, I was, I was looking at Twitter and um, I'm or Twitter, Facebook, and I'm uh, friends with uh, Randy Jordan, who is, uh, he works for, uh, he's Kyvax at Blizzard um, and a podcaster as well, longtime podcaster. And he posted this link to a home in Texas. It was a real estate listing. And he said, Dolores Umbridge lives. And this house was this woman's house that she had literally had. It was, it was a Dolores Umbridge style house <laughs> with the pink walls. Everything's pink. Everything's frilly and flowery. And I was and like the God. kitchen, the cabinets are hand painted. She's a worse with villain murals. than Voldemort. I mean, she's just the worst. You literally villain. said exactly what I did. Like, she is the worst villain in yeah. fantasy storylines. Like, she's worse than any Sith. Like, she is the yeah. she is pure evil. And that to me is so funny that a little old lady who loves all these pink frilly things is the most evil. And I and it's so true. It is so true. Oh God. <laughs> I said the same thing though. I think that that's the worst we're on the same wavelength. I love it. So bad. <laughs> oh god, that's funny. <laughs> All right. We did the show. I'm hungry. I'm you're same. probably hungry too. Yeah, so um Emma and I started the Gamers Get Fit challenge. So we're doing the oh, like month yes. with uh and so far so good. But we're she's almost home. We're going to do our our workout for the day so nice yeah. i saw nicole and tim for brunch on saturday it was so good to see jealous them. jealous I, I haven't seen them for months and like they hadn't yeah. heard about details of my job or anything i hadn't seen them for oh, months wow. so, it was so you guys nice have a lot to, to catch up on probably yeah yeah they've got some very awesome stuff happening behind the scenes which is pretty cool so yeah yeah. So it's so good to see them. I, I mean, you know, workhorse and Baraski live here too, and I never see them. I saw right. them back in February when they put this Dropped piece of the computer the in my house. But, but I'm like, we need to go out more. We need to go out yeah. because we're here and we could see each other. But the so. thing is, it's like, the life of a content creator is just freaking hustle, man. Like everyone is working to the bone. Like when do they have time to just like? I mean, that's just. It makes it even more special, you know, when, when yeah. you guys go out because you guys both coordinated through so many obstacles to, like, make that happen. 
It's so cool. Yeah, and you literally have to plan it in like three weeks in advance to ensure, ensure yeah. that like I, I texted Nicole, uh, you know, a week prior to see if she would be able to go to brunch. And then I was like, the day before, I'm like, you guys still free? And then she's like, yeah. So I'm like, thank you. I'm so glad. Oh, but you just have, you have to plan in advance and you have to make sure that it's free, especially for like a Friday night dinner for people. Yeah. And so, but we'll make it happen. I mean, you know, it, it's easier said than done when you have like, you know, you have a bunch of people in the community that live relatively close to you. And it's really hard to plan so to get hard. out to go do the thing so yeah, i've been trying to schedule a uh like trip to the renaissance fair with tatsuki chu and and juji and some other people and it's just like when do you like have the time it's just a mess yeah. like life is cr crazy and anytime you're not spending like creating something for uh your brand or your whatever content is you're making you like it gives you it well it gives me anxiety anyway i've talked about this before yeah. i feel like i should always yeah. be doing something but yeah it's part of it it's all wrapped up in that yeah or it's making sure that i'm getting adequate rest which is you know the mm -hmm. other side of the coin and so yeah, yeah it's true. just oh man so well, thank you, chat room, for being with us. And uh, yeah, be here next week for an uh, amazing. Tomorrow's going to be a great thing for Heroes Hearth, too. We've got Heroes Hearth Wednesday. Yep. Um, and we have all the hero stuff. We've got Rank Win. We've got Ready Up. We've got Fight Night this week. Two Division S teams facing off, which should be awesome, with our lovely Jay How and Haloran on the casting desk. So come back and see us tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We're going to host somebody. We'll find them. Yep. So hang out if you're here. We'll send you over to somebody cool. All right. Bye, everybody.